Welcome to the first lecture of this course, which is Numerical Analysis for Computer Engineers. I am Bora Jambula, and I work as an associate professor in the Computer Engineering Department. We will be together in this course for this semester, and we will learn about errors, how computers can store numbers, and numerical solutions of linear or nonlinear equations, numerical derivatives, numerical integrals, and I think it will be fun to write some codes to calculate something, and it will be fun to learn the details about these calculations. And you can always contact me by using Microsoft Teams or email whenever you want. And today, we will start we will start by talking about errors. Errors. And if we talk about errors, there are two words which will be very important for us. And these two words are accuracy and precision. Accuracy Sorry. I couldn't write. Accuracy and precision. Precision. Accuracy, accuracy is a value. It's a value. It's a value including some errors. For now, just some errors, including some errors. But it's a value. But precision, it's about how many digits we will use in our mathematical operations. It's about how many, how many digits which we will use in our mathematical operations. And I think you all know the meaning of digits. Maybe we can give an example for you. Let's think about the number pi, and it's 3.14159, and it goes like this. And these are digits, right? And if we use this notation, uh, we use five digits after the decimal point. But if we use pi equals 3.14, then it would be two digits, okay? And it's about precision. Precision is about how many digits we use in our mathematical operations. And also, today we are going to talk we are going to talk about two types of errors, two types of errors. And one of them, one of them is approximation errors, approximation errors. The other one is rounding errors, rounding. Rounding errors. And for approximation errors, I can give an example. Let's uh, let's think about, for example, y equals e to the power of x. A is a natural number, and e to the power of x. And what if we use Taylor series to calculate? this equation, to calculate the result of this equation. What if we use Taylor series to calculate this equation? And it becomes y equals, we're going to use a sum, and let's say that n equals 0, and it goes up to a value which we call n max. It will be a maximum value for n. And then the term becomes x to the power of n over n factorial, right? And it becomes like this. So 
in computers we have to use a finite number for n max right so n max should be at the, uh, and even has to be n max has to be a finite number finite number so it becomes with an approximation and it comes with an error right it becomes an approximation and it comes with an error so for example we can use n max equals 5 or n max equals 500 or n max equals even 1 million and after one point we can say it's enough n max equals 1 million and we can use it and this result of Taylor series can be accepted as a result of e to the power of x but it comes with an error and we call it approximation error so we take the terms for n starting from 0 up to a finite value n max but we neglect the terms starting from n equals n max plus 1 up to infinity okay in reality and in real mathematics this n max should be equal to infinity but in computers in numerical computing n max should be equal to a finite number so we call this difference approximation errors but when it comes to rounding errors then it's about floating point numbers and it's the way we store real numbers in computers floating point numbers it's the way which we use to store real numbers real numbers in computers okay so if we use floating point numbers then it comes with an error and we call this type of error rounding errors okay for example let's talk about this mathematical operation let's say that we have two and take the square root of this number square root of two and then take the take the square of this number and then minus two okay just pause the video and calculate this operation square root of two and then square of this number this result and then minus two with the basic mathematic knowledge obviously it should be equal to zero right it should be equal to zero but when it comes to calculate this operation to calculate the result by using a computer it will be different so now I'm gonna clear the whole page and then and then run Jupyter Notebook to calculate this operation by using Python and yes in this course we are gonna need a computer we are gonna need a programming language to calculate such operations and the most popular programming language for such operations are MATLAB and Python but in this course I'm going to prefer Python. I'm going to go with Python and I'm going to use Jupyter Notebook. Let's create a Python Notebook to make this operation. And I'm going to write again this operation to this area. 
square root of 2 and square root of these numbers minus 2. I'm going to make this operation. Okay. Let's do this. Let's take square root of 2 and then take the second power of this term and then minus 2. And again, I want you to pause the video now and check the result. If this code works, if this code will work or not. Okay? Obviously, obviously it won't work because now the name square root is not defined, the function square root is not defined, and I'm gonna first import the required library which is maybe you already know which is numpy I'm gonna import numpy and then use the square root function from numpy library by using this and then I'm gonna calculate but the result result doesn't equal to zero right it should be equal to zero but we have this number now 4.44 and maybe you don't know the meaning of this part this is for 10 to the power of minus 16 so we have this number 0 0.00000016 times and then 4440.89 and it goes like this. But it isn't exactly zero. There is a difference. There is a difference and we call it rounding error. This is this isn't the result that we expected okay so we call difference as rounding error and now time for a small homework time for a small homework I want you to install Jupyter notebook and I want you to create a Python notebook and make these operations but I want you to make Python to show this result as exactly zero okay I want you to make Python to show this result exactly zero and the rest of the video is about uh, how you can install Jupyter notebook how you can create a Python notebook and some other things about Jupyter notebook uh, I recorded that part earlier for another course which is data science for graduate students enjoy that part and uh, you have one week for this small homework I want you to make Python to show this result exactly zero and also there is another homework in that part about Jupyter notebook and see you in the next video okay enjoy the rest of the video see you next week all right, the very first thing that we are going to do is to install Python to our computers. And I strongly recommend you to use a software called Anaconda, which provides a complete solution about Python, IPython, and the notebook structure, which we are going to use in this course. So I start my web browser and www.anaconda.com This is the site which we can download the software Anaconda and it's a commercial software but the individual solution which is free works for us so I'm going to select individual edition I'm going to select downloads and then I'm going to select the appropriate type of software according to my operating system 
and I'm using Windows right now so I select this one the download has completed so I'm going to run the file which we downloaded and it's a classical Windows setup next I agree all users yes next and there's an option add anaconda tree to the system path environment variable or register anaconda tree as the system python 3.8 I'm going to select the second one and I will just use anaconda to develop something with Python okay and I recommend you to do so so okay after a while it seems completed so I don't want to see a tutorial and I want I don't want to learn more okay now we are ready I'm going to start anaconda now with this link anaconda navigator all right anaconda is running now so I can start to use Jupyter Notebook Jupyter Notebook is a web-based software which we can use Python or R notebooks in it. So to start Jupyter Notebook, I'm going to click this launch button below the Jupyter Notebook icon. And yes, my default web browser has opened. So I can start to use Jupyter. So I can create a new notebook by clicking this button, this new button, and then select Python 3. All right, I am ready. In Jupyter Notebooks, we are going to use IPython. And IPython is a term stands for Interactive Python. Uh, it's a project which was uh, started by Fernando Perez in 2001 and he calls his project uh, as an enhanced Python interpreter and by the way Python is an interpreted language what does it mean we don't have a Python compiler but we do have a Python interpreter which runs our code which we wrote in Python line by line and shows the necessary results or do the necessary operations because of our codes okay and in Jupyter we have this notebook structure for example this box is called as a cell and it can include some Python codes but it doesn't have to be included the code it it also it can also include some texts for example we can change the type of this cell to a markdown to uh, to enter a row text in this cell for example I'm gonna start with the name of the course data science okay this is a plain text and also I can use some Python code for example the most basic function of Python prints and I want the I want to write data science to my screen like this and if we write a code like this one and if you want to run this cell I'm gonna hit shift and enter button okay like this one for example print and again shift and enter okay and also we have another types for example we have this heading type and we get an error Jupyter no longer uses special heading cells okay instead write your headings in markdown cells using sharp characters then it means if I use this character and then I'm gonna check this with a text like this one we can create some headings and also 
If I change the type to markdown and then use a double sharp symbol and then this is a sub heading like this one. Okay, this is a level one heading, this is a level two heading. Then I want to change this one to a level one heading like this. And I want to delete these cells and also this one and also this one this one and this one now now we have a cell and today I want you to learn some basic topics about the Jupyter Notebook and I have selected six subjects today and I'm going to change the type to a markdown. The first one is help and documentation. Second one is magic comments. The third one is input and output history. The fourth one is shell comments. The fifth one is errors and debugging. And the last one, number six, is profiling and timing the code. Okay, we have these six topics today. And we are going to start with help and documentation. If you want to get some help from Jupyter, uh, we are going to use the question mark. For example, let's suppose that I don't remember or I don't even know how to use a Python command, for example, print. Then I can use the question mark like this, print and the question mark. And then I'm going to hit the shift enter. Then it shows me a brief summary of a documentation about the print function. And it's called doc string. Doc string is a brief summary of a documentation about this keyword. It can be a keyword, it can be a, a function, or it can be a, a, another thing. You can use a question mark for uh, Python special words. Okay, and it says print is a function. Obviously, it has some arguments, and there's an explanation for these arguments, and also. We have the type of this function, which is a boolean function or method. Okay. We can close this window now. And also, let's say that I want to create a custom function, a user-defined function. For example, I'm going to define a function which has the name myPrint. And let's say that it has an arguments and it has a very basic function which runs the real print function like this for example I have this custom function now okay and I'm gonna check if it if it works or not like this Yes, it's working. What if I'm going to use the question mark with my user defined function, my print question mark. And again, it it gives us a doc string but with an explanation, no doc string. My print is a function, okay? It takes the str argument and it's defined in this file 
it's a function but we don't have any doc string for this function I strongly recommend to define doc string for your user defined functions but how can we do that I'm gonna use the first line of our function definition with a three cute marks like this for multi-line comments in Python and this is a documentation about the function my print it is okay it was created in the first lecture and also str string arguments okay now I'm gonna click shift enter and then I'm gonna run this cell again by shift enter now we have our doc string for our function my print and it says the same text like we have defined in the first three lines in our function definition it's a very good way to create small documentations of your user defined functions and I strongly recommend to use them and also I can use a double question mark to see the source code of a function for example my print in this cell if I use my print and double question mark and then run the cell and it gives us the source code of my function like this you can see the source code of these small user defined functions by using double question mark but what if let's close this sub window what if I use the double question mark for the print function shift enter and it doesn't gives us the real source code and it gives us again the same doc string when we use the single question mark okay for building functions it doesn't matter uh, you use double question mark or single question mark but for user defined functions you can see the source code by using double question mark all right now we have learned about the usage of question marks but most of the time uh, we cannot use question mark like in these previous examples most of the time we remember a word but uh, we cannot remember the whole name of the function of course we can use the autocomplete function of Jupyter by hitting the top button like this one like I if I write PRI first three letters of the print and then hit the enter uh, hit the top button sorry then it uh, gives us two options which includes print which starts with print <clears throat> but like I said uh, we don't remember the whole name but uh, we can remember just a word uh, from this function like for example I cannot remember the keyword but uh, I remember it includes file and then I can use question mark with asterisks like this one I remember the word file and if I write asterisk in the starting and also I can use asterisk in the end of the word and then the question mark and then hit shift enter then it gives me the function names or keywords which includes this word file like in this example file exists error file not found error I use them so much and I get benefits so much from this function like it's called uh, wildcards 
okay it's called wildcards use asterisks and question marks together now it's time to learn the second topic which I selected magic comments magic comments starts the percentage symbol like this and if we use a single percentage symbol it affects only the line but if we use double percentage symbol then it affects the whole cell and we are going to start with a very simple magic comments magic comments sorry it's run and uh, it's for uh, running the external scripts which is written in Python for example I have searched a Python program which sorting using bubble sort algorithm which sorting the lists Python lists by using bubble sort algorithm and I'm gonna copy I'm gonna copy these codes I'm gonna copy these codes sorry I couldn't do it All right, let's use this one. <laughs> let's use this button. Okay, then I'm going to create a file and pass this code and save this to where to to the same folder with my Python notebook with my Jupyter notebook and it's in users Bora Jambula here and I'm gonna select the uh, Python like this I'm gonna give the name Bob sort okay all right now we have a Python file Bob sort that's py and I want to run this file from my Jupyter notebook and I'm gonna type percentage symbol run which is a magic command and then the name of the file bob sort dot py okay is it correct I'm gonna check yes it's correct it has the function definition and then it has an example and it's okay it puts them it puts these numbers into an ascending order okay it works and as time goes by for almost in every topic we, we will see different magic commands and also we can see a list of the magic uh, commands available to us by using the command percentage symbol magic and I'm gonna hit shift enter and it gives me a documentation again like usage and the most common magic uh, command and we will learn it in profiling and timing code section time it comments and also we have a lot of magic comments like as you see CD is that the magic name and also you can use question marks for magic comments like in this example All right, it's a good documentation. It's a good documentation. You can read this documentation, but like I said, we will learn all these magic commands as time goes by, topic by topic. Now, we can use also a question mark like this and show the doc string of the magic function, print information about magic function system. All right. All right. Now, I'm going to delete this cell. 
this one and this one. Now it's time for the third topic, input and output history. But first, I want to restart my kernel to clear the inputs and outputs. And I'm going to hit that tiny button. And it says, do you want to restart the current kernel? Yes, all variables will be lost. OK, restart. And there's a notification here, which says me my kernel is ready. OK, I'm going to add a cell. And I want to calculate something. Let's say that 6 times 9. And shift enter. We got the result 54. Of course, I can save this number, save this result in a variable. And I can reuse it whenever I want. But also, Jupyter Notebook has a special keyword uh, to make me enable to reach this results and this keyword is out if i type out and shift enter i got this dictionary be careful uh, this is a dictionary and uh, with the first element of 54 which comes from here this 54 and let's calculate another thing like 9 over 3 or make them a decimal 9 over 4, shift enter, we got this result, and let's type out again, shift enter, now we have this dictionary, which has the first element with this 54, and the third element with this 2.25, but it doesn't include a second element, which comes from here. Okay, and also I can reach by using indexes, like this, out 1, 54, and also out 3, like this, 2.25. And also you can uh, find, the, find the correct indexes by using this area. You can see the indexes from this part of the notebook, and obviously 2.25 is out Three. And also, Jupyter Notebook has a special keyword for inputs, which is in. But be careful, in has a different type, and it has the type of lists. The output of in command is a list, but output of out command is a dictionary. And also, we can use the indexes from this part. For example, let's find in three like this and we get uh, nine over four but be careful uh, because of it has a type of lists it has the same type for each element so nine over four is a string here okay be careful and also there's a special symbol to reach the last output and it's underscore like this if i type underscore and hit the shift enter then i get the same output same output as the previous cell and also we can find the second output by using a double underscore but first i want to change the output like this and also this and I'm going to use double underscore symbol to get the, this one, 2.333, like this. And also, it works with a three, triple underscore. And I'm going to fill this area like this to get three different outputs. And if I use the triple underscore like this, I will get 0 0.5. Okay. These are special symbols to reach the outputs or inputs of our Jupyter notebook. And also, I can suppress the output of a cell. For example, let's say that calculate 4.5.
but this time I'm going to use a semicolon at the end of the line like this sorry like sorry like this a semicolon at the end of the line and shift enter it calculates the results it uh, it it, uh, it did its job and it m makes the operation but it doesn't show any output okay if we use a semicolon at the end of the line like any other uh, language like MATLAB and other scripting languages like MATLAB uh, it suppresses the it suppresses the output of this line all right the fourth topic is shell commands and i think you are already very familiar with shell commands uh, i'm gonna run the command prompt for example the most basic command is dir to see the list of the uh, directory so if i use this command in a jupyter notebook i have to use an explanation mark at the starting of this line like explanation mark dir shift enter gives me the same result for example let's see the active tasks with task lists and i'm gonna use the same command in jupyter notebook task lists sorry like this you see and let's ping google ping www.google.com let's try this in jupyter notebook with ping all right but of course with an url <laughs> Pink www.google.com and it says I think you can see the asterisk in these square brackets uh, before getting the results from this comment and if it, if it takes some time it looks like this and then we get the results and also we can save the results of a shell command like for example my ping equals explanation mark ping let's try mcbu.edu.tr like this it works now it is working now Obviously, our website is slower than Google. Yes, now we can check the result by typing print my ping. All right. Now we get the result. So we can communicate with the shell by using an explanation mark. Let's continue with errors and debugging. And I'm gonna add a cell. And I will start by defining a custom function. Let's say that my div, and it has two parameters, two arguments, and let's return A over B. I want to create an error. And shift enter. And let's say that 4 and 5. Shift enter. And it gives me the result 0 0.8. But what if I use 0 as the argument B, my D 4 and 0, shift enter and I got an error message and it's zero division error because uh, I want to make the calculation 4 over 0 it's an error for Python so I got this T 
traceback. Traceback is a special name for this error message. And it's a zero division error. And now I have a magic command like we have learned in section two. I have a magic command which is called xmod. xmod. And let's say that xmod plain like this and it gives me the message exception reporting mode plain and then I'm gonna do the same thing my d 4 and 0 shift enter I get a trace back again I get an error again but this time I get less texts so I'm going to change first I'm gonna ask Jupiter to help me X mod question mark like this and what does it say switch mods for exception handlers okay valid mods plain context variables and minimal and default mode is context like this one to get this type of tracebacks the default mode is context and I I have changed the exception reporting mode to plain to get less uh, error messages and also let's try minimal percentage x mode minimal okay now try the same thing and also I want to show you another magic comment history and let's try my div 4 and 0 again now in minimal we we just get the error zero division error division by zero but we don't know where it is okay like in the context mode we can see these function definitions but in minimal mode we cannot and Let's try X mod variables. Variables. Now, sorry, my div zero and four again. Now, I get this traceback message. Okay, the maximum is variables, minimum is minimal, and it goes like this: minimal, plain, context, and variables. And the default mode is context and if it is not enough for you you can use the debug function of uh, Jupiter of Python sorry and let's write debug sorry first I want to get trace back message again because it works like this my d0 and 4 shift enter and then I'm going to write percentage debug all right now I'm in a console I Python debug console and it's about the last traceback message traceback message and it's uh, it comes from here and I can uh, check the results check the values of variable like for example print a it's 4 and print b it's 0 and the error comes from the value of b you can check the values of the variables or you can uh, run uh, any other python code or even you can uh, move the code like this uh, for example up or down like sorry not with a capital up and now I'm in this line and down for example I'm in this line now and down and it's the end okay so we can travel between the lines or we can check the 
values of the variables by using the debug mod of i python all right when you are done just type quit to stop debug mods and let's delete these cells by using double d and I'm gonna restart my kernel again all right it's time for the last topic profiling and timing code and for this topic I want you to I want to give you an homework so I will give you six different magic commands time it sorry time time it and Piron, L Piron, which requires an additional package you should import to your code, and Mamit, and also MP Run. Okay, you have these six magic commands, and I want you to create a Jupyter notebook uh, by using these commands and show me how they are working. Okay, you can send your notebooks. By using Microsoft Teams, you can send your notebooks to me by using Microsoft Teams, or you can use Kaggle instead of installing Jupyter to your notebook to your uh, PC. And Kaggle is an online platform. Sorry, I couldn't write. Kaggle is an online platform uh, which you can create uh, notebooks, and you can send me the link. Okay. You don't have to send me the whole notebook, the whole file. You can send me just a link. See you in the next video.